Life hacks for Fallout 76? Is that even possible? Oh yes it is, and I'm about to show you over a dozen of them to make your gameplay easier and more satisfying. Let's get into it. Hello, hello everyone, welcome to another Fallout 76 video. In this one, I will go over some of my favorite tricks to make the game a little bit more convenient and pleasant to play. Everything you are about to see doesn't include glitches or exploits, they are legit tips and tricks, fair and square. In the end, it's just hidden information that a lot of people don't seem to know yet, such as browsing your inventory faster finding legendary bodies among meat piles very easily, speeding up the ammo machine converter process, or even freeing some camp budget by being strategic about your garden. I hope the following life hacks will be as useful to you as they have been to me. So, let's start. I really think every Fallout 76 player should be aware of this trick because it saves you so much time. There are several ways to browse your inventory and stash quicker by using Ctrl or Alt. Alt is like the medium speed while Ctrl is the fast mode. I always press Ctrl and then scroll down with my mouse while browsing for example my upper real tab because I have like 50 costumes there. Before I learned about this trick some months ago, I would need about 20 seconds to get to the bottom of certain tabs and it was really frustrating. Now I can get there in just a few seconds. It's really a life hack that makes a difference. It's no longer difficult or bothersome to browse crowded tabs and you can do it with way less clicks. This works for your stash and scrap box as well. I believe it works for consoles too, but I'm not sure about the exact keys. Well, I hope you will have a better experience browsing now after learning this trick. Enjoy! Another brilliant life hack to speed up things is about the ammo converter machine, which is kinda like a clicking simulator right now, and it takes a long time to convert large amounts of ammo. It's tedious and a hassle to use. However, there is a similar trick to the one previously described, which allows you to convert any ammo type much quicker. This time you need to press tab to basically skip all the dialogues and new window delays. Select the ammo type you want to convert, then use tab followed by enter and then repeat until you are basically done. You can convert anything in a blink of an eye by spamming the two keys until you run out of that same ammo or points. You can use it for both. You can save so much time using this trick, it will also preserve your sanity, which is a big plus. So try it out, I am sure you won't regret it. Here's another extremely useful trick if you tend to kill lots of enemies in a single place. You can use your functional camera to spot legendary or specific bodies on the floor. That's right. This is really helpful when you have just killed dozens of enemies in a single location or during an event. You can easily miss legendary loot if you check body by body the normal way. Let's not even mention how tedious that is to do, so grab your functional camera and aim at the bodies. Check the names that pop up on the right top side of your screen and see if anything of your interest shows up. If yes, make sure to move in the direction of the name until you find the body. If the name disappears from the screen, it means the body is now out of the frame or screen area. So that's it, it's a really easy thing to do and it can be so incredibly useful. The next trick is a very old one, it has been around since the release days, but for some reason not everyone knows about it. Every time your crops get destroyed, I bet you're wishing really loudly that some crops survive so you can gather them to repair the destroyed ones, but there is a way to repair any crops using only fertilizer. How? Well, all you have to do is scrap the destroyed crop. I'm dead serious. Scrap it and then go to the food tab in the building mode and just like magic, you will have a seed for that same scrapped plant. 
Whenever you scrap a destroyed crop, you get fertilizer and one unit of that veggie, so you can easily plant it back. Don't waste time repairing, just scrap and replant to quickly get back to what you were doing. If you are struggling with your camp budget and you have a garden, then this trick is most likely for you. With the new turbo fertilizer machine sold by Sammy at the foundation, you can refresh your garden as many times as you want, as long as you have the turbo grenades, that is. So let's say you have 10 corns at your garden. You can reduce it to three or four since you can gather them multiple times with no cooldown by using the turbo fert on the crops. It's like having way more veggies when you actually don't. By the way, don't forget to equip Green Town to get extra veggies per gather as well. So with this new item, you can freely remove a few crops in order to get more camp budget and use it for all the new items coming live every week. You are welcome. Ever since the season system came live, you need a lot of experience to earn score, whether it is by leveling up once daily or by doing the repeatable challenge. Doing Nuclear Winter can help you earn experience, but sadly, it doesn't count towards the repeatable one. However, you still earn experience and you can farm it for your daily level up challenge by doing passive matches. Yes, you don't have to play to earn experience. How? Well, whenever you are busy, let's say cooking, cleaning, working, just start a solo Nuclear Winter match, but please, Please queue up as a solo player so you don't end up in a team and affecting others with your inactivity. Make sure to spawn at the center of the map for better chances at surviving longer. Remember, the longer you survive, the more experience you will earn. If you have time, hide in a bush and well, that's it. You can even use this while all chubbing, watching a movie, reading the news. It's a nice way to earn passive experience in adventure because you can earn thousands of experience just by staying alive in nuclear winter. So yes, this is a little trick I use sometimes while editing and it works really well, especially when your HP bar is quite empty. The next point is something that might sound not so smart at first, but it makes a lot of sense. So most Fallout 76 players are not competitive and they're not so good at PvP or aiming with a lot of precision. In Nuclear Winter, you should always aim for the head, that's the way you can do the most damage and one or two hit people. However, doing headshots is not so easy, at least with most weapons. So here's a life hack for you. Always aim at your enemy's chest or belly instead to ensure you actually hit them. Trying to hit the head will generally get you killed since you will probably miss a lot with a few exceptions, like scoped lever rifles which allow you to hit with precision and it gives you plenty of time to spot targets from afar and plan your shots very nicely. I think the most important is to hit people and do some damage rather than trying to one hit them and fail and well, going down in the process. I've been using this trick for a very long time and I usually pick up a fair amount of kills without headshots, so I'm confident it can help you too if you play Nuclear Winter, of course. Now, we have a very easy trick that can solve your over-encumbered problems temporarily. If you usually carry your power armor with you, then feel free to spawn your frames whenever you are a little bit over-encumbered. You can free 10 carry weight per frame for a short while, which allows you to fast travel to a train station to sell all the junk you are carrying. This is also an old trick and it's a quick way to overcome the carry way problems for a short while, as I said. Of course, every time you fast travel, your frames will return to your inventory and you will become over encumbered again. This is just a way to well unstuck yourself within the fast travel system. It's a good thing to know for sure. 
In update 20, Bethesda added a new audio option for voice chat. You can now max it out to boost people's voice in game. I used to have a lot of issues understanding people before because their voices were really low in game. Ever since I maxed this new option out, I've been hearing everyone loud and clear. So I really recommend you to do the same. Even if you can't answer back, at least you can understand what people are saying around you. That's normally a positive thing. For some reason, most people seem to think the event experience buff is the best when it comes to public team goals. I've mentioned this in other videos and I will mention it again. Building teams are the most beneficial because intelligence gives you experience gain. You can unlock up to 8% experience gain with a full building team, which gives you 4 more intelligence points. Now, while event teams can boost your experience gain from the event completion itself, building teams can boost your experience gain from basically any source, including kills, of course. So, it's about time you start switching to building teams if you haven't yet. It's way more beneficial, don't you think so? Do you find building material challenges quite annoying to do? They used to pop up a lot before the season system came live and it will probably keep appearing every now and then, but here's the trick. There is an easy way to complete such challenges where you must collect a certain amount of different junk items. Just head to a tinker bench and bulk the items in the list. Then scrap them and voila! You only need some plastic to craft the bulks and that's it. The challenge will get completed in no time. No more hassle collecting junk you don't need for the challenge when you actually have so much stored already. So enjoy! Next, we have a tip that a lot of you surely know about, but you probably forget on a daily basis. There is a perk under intelligence called Scrapper that can drastically increase the amount of junk you get from scrapping armor and weapons. In fact, if you scrap gear with this perk on, you hardly need to farm certain materials like steel. You can get around 20 steel from most fire weapons, for example. Isn't that amazing? Sometimes I forget about this perk and I think a lot of you do too. So here's a reminder. Lastly, I have another strategy trick that can save you a lot of inventory space and allow you to carry a lot more items, such as legendaries. As you surely know, there is a daily scrip cap of 150, which means you can only scrip a few select legendary items every single day. Now, instead of randomly scripting them, you should always scrip the heaviest items first and leave the lightest ones for the next day or another time. Why should you do this? Well, this way you can carry a lot more things at once and your chances to become over-encumbered are way less. Plus, you get to keep farming legendaries for longer without having to stash them in your ult. Alright, these are my favorite life hacks for Fallout 76 right now. I think they are extremely helpful and I can't imagine playing without most of them at this point anymore. What about you? Which tip was your favorite? Do let me know in the comment sections below. Also, feel free to share your daily life hacks with me if they are not in this video. I am Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching. As usual, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. And you can support me even further by becoming a member or a patron. The links are always below the video. Now, I will see you all very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!